What's going on guys, it's Fancy Stock Exchange here, bringing you another mock draft to the channel. Today we're gonna actually embark in a 12 team half PPR mock draft style. We're actually gonna find out the picks as soon as we hop into this draft, we don't know yet, but we're, you guys are gonna see it live, what we're picking. Actually, you're gonna be seeing it in the title of the video to be quite honest, but before we do that, Bush, how you doing today? I'm doing good. Um, so what we're doing uh, today, tomorrow, and uh, Sunday is uh, we're going to do a Yahoo mock. This is using Yahoo pre-draft rankings, Yahoo ADP on Fantasy Pros. Really cool tool that you can actually do that using the Fantasy Pros Draft Wizard. Uh, Saturday is going to be an NFL.com. So anyone who uses NFL Fantasy can kind of follow along with that. And then Sunday will be ESPN. Instead of doing one last like mock draft, we figured we'd do – everyone uses different platforms. So we're going to do the three platforms – I guess that are the most popular, I would say. Maybe Sleeper is up there too or whatever. But uh, yeah, I'm doing good. Let's get into this. Yeah, for sure. Again, as you kind of mentioned, uh, those are the three main platforms that most users or most subscribers to the channel, most viewers that are actually going to be watching this are going to be using on their home league drafts. So just getting a mock draft from each platform will kind of give you guys the different types of ADPs, different types of player values. Maybe, oh, I like this player. I can wait around to get him because he's undervalued on this platform. All these different platforms are going to have different player values. So just being able to manipulate the board to your liking is going to help you uh, and uh, make your team uh, more optimal in terms of value. So definitely use, uh, use your mock draft simulators too. I know NFL, I don't know about ESPN, but I know NFL and Yahoo have mock draft lobbies. Like go into those. I know it's a pain in the ass drafting with other people in those, but you get a legitimate sense for how players are valued on those platforms because I know, for example, Yahoo has Austin Eckler super low. Like you might be able to get him in like the mid second round, whereas NFL, I believe, has him like properly valued. For sure. So just being able to be aware when that sort of stuff happens, sort of players like that are uh, valued is mostly going to be key, especially say you're picking at the turn and uh, you may have a guy a little bit ahead of another guy, but it's super close. Let's, let's, let's use Austin Eckler and Josh Jacobs, for example. You like both of those guys really, really a lot, and you pick at the 110, but you see that Austin Eckler's on the ADP down at like the low end of the second round. Maybe take Jacobs at the 10, even if you like Eckler a little bit more, and ultimately be able to pair him at that 202. So either way, you'll see what happens today. Super pumped to get into this Yahoo-style mock draft, but before we do that, let's hit the intro. Okay, so we're starting up. So we're going to start this draft as you guys see, and we'll be finding out the picks as soon as, well, you guys are going to know before us because you're seeing the title, as I mentioned. And uh, let's get the draft board just so I can kind of see. So I'll be picking from the 10, Corey, the 11. So oddly enough, I said the 110 in that uh, little intro and I ended up getting it. So you'll see how I attack this. But uh, yeah, the mock drafts will start in about 10 seconds and we'll get this show on the road. Yeah, the one, the 110 and the 111, I've seen some people complain about having this pick. And I mean, I get this pick all the time. <laughs> Every draft I've been this year, I have a late pick. But it's not a bad thing because as we've mentioned on numerous occasions, the running backs go off the board hot and heavy, as you just saw in, that, uh, in those first seven picks. And you, if you want to get two of them, like me and Danny have been preaching, then this is the prime opportunity to get two of them is by picking from like the 109 to the 112. For sure. Fully agreed there. And uh, although I mentioned uh, in your mock drafts that uh, Austin Eckler may fall to you at that 203. He absolutely he also, will not. He absolutely will not in ours because uh, we both love him. So maybe in yours, you know, the, you know, the room, you know, the people that you're actually drafting with, they, maybe they don't like Austin Eckler. I know Bush very well likes him as well. And if I pass on him here, hoping to take him later, he's just not going to make it back to me. So I'm going to go with my sixth ranked uh, or seventh ranked half PPR running back in Austin Eckler at this current point and not look back. So lock him up there. I mean, you guys know us on the channel. We both love Austin Eckler. So, yep. And my next ranked running back had this guy not gotten injured. It would be Miles Sanders, but I'm going to go with Josh Jacobs, who is um, after the Sanders injury is my next ranked running back. I believe he's my RB eight right now if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, definitely. And good. Joe Mixon wasn't going to pick you. So I'm actually going to pair him with Miles Sanders. I oh, 
Good I'm starting to think that Miles Sanders' injury is a little bit less concerning than we initially thought. I think he'll be back on the field this week as the uh, as teams shift from like training camp mode to preparing for week one. I think this is when we're going to see Miles Sanders get back on the field. For sure, definitely like that. And uh, yeah, I'm looking at the board here, and as you mentioned, I was really hoping uh, Sanders, Jacobs, or Mixon would fall to me. I kind of have them, even though they're similar to you, I kind of have them a little bit ahead of uh, guys like Chubb, Drake, and Jones. But uh, because it's a, uh, a half PPR, if it was a full PPR, I would not take him. But because it's a half PPR, I can kind of supplement that that receiving, I, I don't want to say like lack of ceiling, but that's basically what you're getting with a guy like Nick Chubb. I do think in a half PPR, he can still give you value because he's ultimately going to be one of the most featured rushers in the ground game. And in half PPR compared to full, you don't necessarily need that receiving upside uh to be as high because again, you're not getting as many points for the actual reception total. So I'm going to go with Nick Chubb again. Uh, if, if it was a full PPR, I would probably have taken uh, Julio Jones or maybe Kenyon Drake there, but uh, in the half PPR locking up Nick Chubb, I'm fine with taking him there at the two Oh three. One of the top 14 running backs we mentioned. Uh, if you guys are watching this, make sure you go check out the top 10 draft strategies. I basically kept referring to the top 14 running backs this year. And both Chubb, or all of Chubb, Sanders, Jacobs, and Eckler are in that tier, in our opinion. Generally, Aaron Jones is generally the last one in terms of ADP. Not in terms of my rankings, but in terms of ADP that is picked. Usually Aaron Jones is that cutoff point for me. Um, of like the running backs. And then I'm looking at guys like Chris Godwin and, and uh, the tight ends and potentially even the quarterbacks at that point. For sure. For sure. Now looking at the board here, uh, the thing is I really like the, my favorite running back left on the board in terms of how my team is currently constructed for uh, the ultimate upside down the stretch is I'm actually going to be taking Jonathan Taylor here. So because if I, if I needed a running back to start right away, I'd probably go with Gordon, but because I can afford to take that uh, risk of, potentially like waiting for production on him. I'm going to go with Taylor because I think his upside week four on or so is going to be tremendous. So uh, I pair uh, I pair him with those other two running backs I have in Eckler and Chubb, and I'm feeling really confident with this team that I have thus far. Yep, definitely. Uh, I, I like the pick of Jonathan Taylor. I think when, when we look back on this season, we might look like, not not we, but like just the fantasy industry in general being like, why were we like scared of Marlon Mack? Like, mm-hmm. I think Jonathan Taylor is that special. He was my RB1 coming into the uh, NFL draft. And I think we're all going to kind of patter, like we're going to be like face palming at the end of the season being like, why weren't we taking this guy in the second round? Because the, du- the dude's a stud. And um, I'm looking at Melvin Gordon here. who's intriguing, but I think I got a tear break at receiver and I'm going to take Adam Thielen with this pick here. I knew that was coming. That was the other consideration and actually for my pick. Ah, I just, Melvin got takes. Oh, taken. I just didn't think that Taylor would make it back to me. So ultimately, uh, Thielen there is a really good pick and sorry about that. Gordon snipe. Yeah, it's all good. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go with, uh, my highest rated receiver right now is Cooper cup. But because I have Adam Thielen, I'm thinking I, I got some safety on my team. So I, I think I'm going to swing for the fences here. And this, this is another guy. I just I mentioned this is. with Jonathan Taylor that we're going to be like shooting ourselves after this season because we didn't see it coming. Like AJ Brown is going to be a second round, like early second round pick by this time next year. And yeah. we all slept on it. So I'm thinking AJ Brown is a smash in the fourth round as Chris Godwin was last year. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I mean, that's a fantastic pick there. Uh, yeah, I mean, the upside that he has this year is tremendous. This guy's got legitimate top four, top five type upside this year. So, I mean, you want to talk about the, the ultimate volume of the situation. You want to talk about, oh, they might regress in terms of efficiency. AJ Brown is a fucking beast, to put it simply. But, uh, yeah, anyways, looking at my pick. Again, this is a guy that's kind of been undervalued by the industry as a whole. Glad to see that his uh, ADP has gotten raised to about where it should be. And uh, given that he will be my wide receiver one after starting RB heavy, I'm actually going to go with Robert Woods because he is uh, my highest ranked receiver on the board so far. And I do think the safety that you get with a Robert Woods is ultimately going to be the uh, the best option on the board there. So uh, the consistency, the production, I mean, this guy has got sneaky upside as well, but people never want to associate uh, it with him because he's quote unquote a boring pick, but. Uh, Definitely happy with getting Robert Woods there. And I'm actually back on the clock. And somehow, by some miracle, DJ Chark is staring me right in the face at the end of the fifth round. 
Like Brandon Cooks, T.Y. Hilton, Cortland Sutton is going ahead. No, okay. Give me DJ Shark any day of the week, and I know who you're going to take right after. That's going to make you happy, but go ahead, take him. What, you think I'm taking DK Metcalf? Yeah. Because um, you are. <laughs> yeah, you'd probably be right. Uh, look at my <laughs> roster currently. I have okay, – so I got, I got two of each right now. Yeah, Swift, I, I can't do it with Swift. Normally, this would be a smash DeAndre Swift spot at the end of the fifth round, but the, the injury is making me think he's going to get off to like kind of a slow start. So I am going to go with DK Metcalf here. Another is. guy, uh, much like his Ole Miss teammate, we're probably going to be being like, why didn't we see this coming? DK Metcalf had a super efficient rookie season. Guy is a fucking freak of nature. He is the most physically intimidating receiver we've seen since Calvin Johnson. So uh, yeah, I, I love that pick there. And do I have to pull the trigger on Swift here? I feel like I might have to. Uh, nah, nah. You could just take like David Montgomery, James White, Jordan Howard. Like I can't. Like I can't take those guys Dave over Hunt. DeAndre Swift. I, I okay, I'm taking DeAndre Swift here. I know he's going to get off to a bit of a slow start. Maybe I can't use him until the, I don't know, the week six or whatever. But I have to pick him here because the sixth round ADP is is he's at a point where he's at least like a bench player or like a last flex spot for me which uh, i think is appropriate yeah that, that's a big snipe action there that one yeah that one stings but uh looking at the board about who's available left Devonte parker is my highest rate of receiver left and uh although he's he kind of gets a little risk involved with him simply because oh we saw it last year uh we didn't see it before that he kind of just broke out randomly like i do think that he's going to be the number one guy there, plain and simple. I think we're both in the greens there. And if he's able to do that, I mean, we have them both ranked as top 24 receivers, but if he is able to supplement the role that he had in the offense that he did last year, he's got legitimate top 10 upside because we saw it just last year. So I'm going to go with Devontae Parker as my wide receiver three. I'm perfectly fine with the upside that you get with him there. Yeah, yeah, I don't hate that pick. Ah, damn it. I, I knew it was a long shot that Julian Edelman slipped back to me, but that yeah. is who I wanted with my next pick. Holy receivers. Yeah. And it looks like I'm going to be going with my boy. Uh, you going to take J.K. Dobbins, oh, are you? Yeah, I, I thought Dak was on the board, but anyways. Uh, looking at it, I mean, given the construction of my team, there's no way I can't not take J.K. Dobbins at the 7-10. Because, I mean, yeah. I'm getting him as my RB4. I don't need the instant production from him. So, realistically, I mean, I sit him on the bench for the first couple of weeks. He's absolutely going to snap down the stretch. Uh, perfectly fine with that with there. I'm going to snatch up the A.K. Dobbins. Sorry, Bush. Yeah, that's all good. I kind of wanted Deontay Johnson anyway. Um, yeah, Deontay Johnson, we've, we've talked about it on numerous, numerous occasions. Number one in target separation. He did all of what we're making excuses for for Juju Smith-Schuster, except he actually performed in it. Why? Because he could actually get open. So – Deontay Johnson, like I, I'm just, I'm super high on this kid. I think if Juju has a disappointing season again, it actually wouldn't really shock me that much. And if he does have a disappointing season again with Ben playing at a solid level, Deontay Johnson's going to be a league winner. Yeah, no, I, I fully agree. I was hoping him or uh, I'm not going to mention the other name, but one other guy was going to make it back to me, but you're probably just going to take the other guy here. Uh, Hayden Hurst is who you're thinking of clearly. Maybe. Um, I don't think, I don't want to take Hayden Hurst though. I'm going to get a guy that I don't really actually have a lot of shares of. And that's Christian Kirk. I think I like, uh, I like Christian Kirk's outlook this year, man. Like I think the way I look at, uh, Deandre Hopkins outlook, I, it just makes me like Christian Kirk that much more. Yeah. Christian Kirk was the guy. Oh, was it? it wasn't Hayden Hurst. <laughs> well, I, I like Hurst obviously as well, but I just kind of view after Kirk, like a huge tear break. Yeah. It's a little bit of a drop right off. Now. So, uh, yeah, that, Jamison, that, that, when Jamison Crowder is the next best available name in ECR, then you know that it's a big teardrop. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm just gonna take Hayden Hurst here. I mean, clearly the next rated guy at the tight end position, easily in my opinion. My tight end six, getting him here in the eighth round is good value in my opinion. So lock him up there. Feel confident with that. As we do see your boy uh, Rojo go off the board, rest in peace. Yeah, I mean, the eighth round is about where he belongs now, I think. I do think he still has, like, league-winning upside that he always had. It's probably going to – he's probably going to have to play really well for that to happen to keep Fournette at bay or Fournette – I mean, Fournette's never been the most the healthy player in the world, so he could also just get injured. But I do still think Rojo – it is Rojo's job. Bruce Arians came out and said it today. He literally said, Rojo's our guy. And I know no one wants to believe Bruce Arians, but he literally doesn't tell, he doesn't lie. And I don't know why everyone thinks he lies all the time. He literally said, Leonard Fournette is, it was too good to pass up, basically. He's like, he provides us with incredible depth at the position. 
Yeah, fully there. And uh, I'm actually going to go with a guy I don't get a lot. I mean, maybe this is a reach according to the Yahoo ADP. But again, as we mentioned, get your guys, plain and simple. Uh, if I feel like he can return nine round value, I'm definitely just going to take him there, not worry about where he's listed at the receiver position. I'm actually going to go with Justin Jefferson because oh, I do Wrong think... SEC receiver. I was thinking about him, but yeah. Uh, going to go with Justin Jefferson uh, simply because I have a lot of shares of C.D. Lamb uh, and what's it called, Jerry Judy. So I just kind of want to lock up a guy in Justin Jefferson who I think right away can be the second target for the Minnesota Vikings. Can we mention how much we love Adam Thielen realistically? Justin Jefferson's got, an in, Jefferson's got an inside track to be the number two target on that offense. So getting him in the ninth round is pretty good value on that guy. Yeah, I think an underrated thing with the Vikings too is that they literally lost all three of their starting corners. Like yep. they threw the ball, what, 460 times last year? They can't, throw the ball 400, times. they can't throw the ball 460 times with no fucking corners. Like I know yeah. they, they have the, probably the best safety duo in the league, but you can't, if you can't stop the pass, you can't run the ball like crazy. Like you're going to have to throw the ball more than they did last year. And the, the statistics show that they should just naturally do that anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with a guy here that I really, I probably haven't drafted once this year until now. Wow. And that's Tariq Cohen because Tariq Cohen as of right now is alone in that backfield. And I know he's not going to be probably the only one there. Uh, the, like for the, as long as David Montgomery is out, but I mean, he's the primary guy there. He knows the offense best. If they bring in someone, I still think Tariq Cohen is the back to own in the Chicago backfield. And I'm going to pair him with another guy who's of that pass catching mold and Antonio Gibson, who I think, sorry, is, um, <laughs> is a nice upshot, upside shot to put in uh, as your RB five or six on your bench and just kind of hope that he turns into like this, um, this gadget guy in the Washington offense who is very devoid of pass catchers. It's just Terry McLaurin there. And I know Antonio Gibson thinks as running back, but he play, predominantly played receiver in college. And I think they're going to use him out of the backfield as a receiving back from the get-go because Adrian Peterson has never been that guy. And nor is he at the age that he's at now. Yeah, I mean, I, f I fully agree there. I'm actually going to go with a guy who, as of today, the Eagles have three total running backs on their roster and two of them that are actually useful in fantasy, in my opinion. Those two being obviously the guy you took, Miles Sanders, and the guy I'm about to take now in Boston Scott. We saw last year, he's efficient as a pass catcher. He was one of the most efficient backs on the goal line, according to Sharp Football Stats as well. In the 10th round, I do feel like he can give you a little bit of value, especially in a flex spot, uh, to get you over the hump, especially after I'm waiting for those rookies uh, to uh, cement themselves in the NFL. Oh so God, I definitely like the value on him Imagine picking Keyshawn Vaughn over Chase Edmonds. Jeez. Makes me sick. Uh, I would take – oh, no! I was going to say I would take Chase Edmonds. But I was going to take uh, Deshaun Jackson first. Low-key, I kind of wanted Carson Wentz there. I'm getting a little higher on Carson Wentz. The fact that you, you know Carson Wentz threw for 4,000 yards without having a receiver go over 600 last year? Yeah. Isn't that fucking ridiculous? He had, he had a lot of pass attempts, though. I, I, I know. I, I know he that. did. But, like, the team's still, like, like the team is still, like, going to run through Carson Wentz. And, like, I know you're a Cowboys fan, and everyone likes to debate Carson Wentz or Dak Prescott. It's Give me Dak. both of them. They're both great quarterbacks. Like, I know the debate is – going to live on because they're in the same division but the the reality is there's only like five or six better quarterback assets in the league right now than those two guys so Carson Wentz is, a, is an awesome quarterback and people are really sleeping on him for fantasy this year because we've seen his upside and it's the like the number one quarterback in fantasy in 2017 for sure I agree there and I'm actually going to take Michael Pittman Jr uh sorry for the snipe there but after Deshaun Jackson got sniped, which Deshaun Jackson is my prime target, even round nine, round 10 on. I mean, plain and simple, this guy, the first three or four weeks of the season, is absolutely going to blow up. Like, he's going to blow up. He's going to be a top – like, this might sound bold now. After the first four weeks of the season, he's going to be a top 50, maybe even top 10 receiver. I'm saying it right now. His schedule to open up the season is – Absolutely beautiful. Jalen Reger is going to be missing the first month of the year. And outside of that, realistically, outside of Ertz, Goddard, Goddard's actually dealing with an injury right now. Who else is Carson Wentz, as you mentioned, over 600 pass attempts last year, going to throw to? It's going to be Deshaun Jackson when he's healthy. Yep. But anyways, that's a snipe. I was really upset when I saw that. But I'm not going to run more on your clock. Take your guy. Yeah, uh, this is going to be my last running back of the draft, probably. Another just straight upside shot. Rock Armstead, I'm going to take him because – as of right now, I think he's the starting running back for, for uh, Jacksonville. I know Chris Thompson's there, but Chris, let's not pretend like Chris Thompson can play more than fucking six games in a season without getting hurt. Um, and uh, Armstead's predominantly going to get up most of the carries, at least. So I'll take him for a nice upside shot there. And uh, I don't have a quarterback or a tight end yet, so I'm going to look at my options here. 
Um, I can wait on quarterback. I think tight end, I am going to grab. John. Don't, Do I want to grab like anyone it. right now? I think I'm going to grab. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab Mike Kosicki because one I can get Johnny later unless you pick him. Um, <laughs> two, I am I really like I like Mike Kosicki not as much as I like Johnny, but it, he's right right down after that. Like I I really like Mike Kosicki's outlook this year. I don't really believe that Preston Williams is gonna be this superstar receiver. Like he kind of gives me some Keelan Cole vibes to be honest. Like I remember when Keelan Cole had a great rookie season as an undrafted free agent. And now he's like fucking catching balls on the scout team for Jacksonville. So. I, I don't think that Preston Williams is suddenly like the number one target in this offense. And it's just going to completely take away from Mike Kosicki. I think Kosicki showed a lot last year and they want to continue to use him. Yeah, I fully agree. And uh, segueing off that, I'm actually going to take my next highest rate quarterback. I know you're a little off of him, but I'm going to go be going with Cam Newton here again, fully named a starter to start the season. I know you don't like him, but the upside in my opinion is tremendous for a guy like that and at the quarterback position. Yeah, there's a lot of boring, safe options you can go with. But a guy like Cam Newton's got legitimate top five upside. Yeah, he's got more potential to bust. But at the quarterback position in a one-quarterback league, I don't care if he does bust because there's so many options actually on the waiver wire. Give me a guy who actually has legitimate upside giving his Russian floor that he's going to have for the season if he plays a full 16. So Yeah, definitely, yeah definitely. No, no arguments there. Uh, and then looking back on the board now, uh, I'm actually going to go with the guy, in my opinion, who actually – uh, benefited the most from the release of Leonard Fournette. And I'm actually going to be taking LaVisca Chanel. Simply put, the the fact of the matter is last year, those 100 targets that Leonard Fournette received were all basically intermediate around the line of scrimmage. LaVisca Chanel will thrive in catch and run situations for that team, especially removing Leonard Fournette and his 100 targets. I do think LaVisca Chanel could definitely be a solid number two target to DJ Chark on this team. Oddly enough, I actually have DJ Chark. That's not only why I'm taking Visca, but I think in the 13th round, he's got sneaky, sneaky wide receiver two, three type upside for the season, especially for a team that we think is going to throw the ball a ton. So I definitely like LaVisca Chanel's value there. Yep. And you just brought up the Jacksonville Jaguars. That's exactly where I'm going. And I'm taking uh, the mustache man himself. Gardner Minshew is my quarterback. He's my quarterback 11. As much as I like Carson Wentz, I have Gardner Minshew ranked ahead of Carson Wentz. So, and a lot of people might find that insane, but you really didn't watch Gardner Minshew. If you think he's just like some, some Jag pun intended. <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. Good pick. I was there's no way I'm getting him on the way back. So I'm taking Johnny Smith now as my second tight end. And I got my onesie positions pretty well locked up with those last three picks. Yeah, your team's definitely looking solid there. And uh, as you mentioned, because of the kind of insecurity I'm getting with Cam Newton in terms of like the the uh, risks that he does bring, I'm going to get a guy who I think is as safe as can be. Probably the safest quarterback Probably, in fantasy. I mean, plain and simple, I'm going to be going with Jared Goff. The attempts are going to be there. I mean, plain and simple, we don't like we we love to hype up all the pass catching weapons that he has. No one uh, likes golf, but we like no, Woods as a top fifteen receiver. We like Cup as a top fifteen receiver, and we AP. like Higby as a top ten tight end. And, and no one and likes K- and no one likes golf. And we like Cam Akers as potentially being a decent receiving back, even as for as soon as year one. Like Jared Goff, people even like fucking Van Jefferson and Gerald Everett as sleepers. Exactly. So, oh, I was hoping Jarek made it back to me, but the yeah. ADP is actually catching up, but. Anyways, uh, looking at the board now, I mean, there's not really too many guys that give me a lot of uh, excitement. But in the 15th round, this may end up being the first guy that I drop when I'm looking at waivers. Or this guy could take over for an incumbent, Adrian Peterson, within a few weeks and actually provide the talent that we saw from him at Stanford before his knee injury. Again, ton of risk with this, but it's the 15th, uh, 15th round pick. And realistically, I mean, this, guy, this guy's going to be the first guy I drop if, I, if he ends up busting, but he actually does have upside compared to the guys that are around this range. So I'm actually going to be going with Bryce Love. I do think he is a talented back. Obviously, the injury concerns are why he's going to be available here, but I think at this current selection, he has enough upside to actually give me uh, value uh, in terms of taking him and putting him on the end of my bench. So I'll, I'll definitely stash him. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't hate that. Like there's really not many else, like not much else you can find at this point in the draft. They're kind of just a lot of Jags around here. Um, there's one guy that stands out to me. And as of right now, he's, I mean, I think he's dealing with a hamstring strain, but he is really the only healthy receiver on the Niners because like they're dropping like flies and that's uh, Brandon Ayuk. Uh, I liked him coming out of school and I think he has some upside to producing that offense. I fucking killed mine and you got yeah. sewered by your draft grade. 
Yeah, uh, that's because uh, they apparently they don't like the rookies. But anyways, uh, we can actually analyze the rosters because actually just want to say one thing to the viewers. Don't take the grades that you get after your draft. So like you get a grade from ESPN, you get a grade from NFL fantasy, you get a grade from Yahoo that they're going to send you a report, giving you a grade on your team, your projected standings, your projected record. All that means is fuck all to be quite honest. He's just saying that because he lost. No, no, no. I, I'm going to say it because I know a guy in my league last year in one of my leagues, obviously I won the other one, a little, little nod there. Guy had a, a projected record of two and 11 won the league the guy yeah. who had a projected record of 10 and 3 didn't make the playoffs so that just goes to show you i, I wasn't either of those guys i had i had a good prediction i just kind of uh lost uh i'm not gonna get into that right now was, okay. all right let's get into the team let's, let's yeah. talk about the teams yeah all enough right. about me. so my superior team i'll go first no way. um so I have the I have the mustache man himself, Gardner Minshew, as my starting quarterback. I have Miles Sanders and Josh Jacobs, the two best running backs from the 2019 draft class. Fucking stellar fucking man. running back core right there. Adam Thielen and AJ Brown, solid mix of ceiling and floor right there. Actually, I I don't even know why I keep calling Thielen a floor play because we've seen his ceiling and it's fucking insane. Um, Mike Gesicki, a solid tight end option there. DK Metcalf and DeAndre Swift. I'd probably swap DeAndre Swift for Tariq Cohen out if I were to start this lineup because. Tariq Cohen's going to be valuable at the beginning of the season, probably long enough to when DeAndre Swift does kind of finally take over the backfield. I have, um, I, ha- I don't have to use Tariq Cohen anymore. And by then maybe David Montgomery is back. So Deontay Johnson, also another great um, player I could throw into my flex spot. Same goes for Christian Kirk. Um, and then Reichwell Armstead and Antonio Gibson kind of just dart throw like pure upside. Maybe they become starting running backs kind of, uh, kind of options. Maybe they become kind of top 24 options at the position that Johnny Smith, I think is going to be a top 10 tight end. And you guys have heard me talk about him probably every single video that I'm in. And then Brandon Ayuk, he's kind of just another upside shot at um, which should be a, a solid offense. And and he's as of right now, the, the best receiver there aside from George Kittle. So uh, until Debo Samuel comes back. For sure. And then going through my roster again, I have Jared Goff in the starting quarterback position. I probably would uh, start, uh, Cam Newton for the majority of my games, but I guess the algorithm wants to put golf in there. Whatever. I picked Newton first, but we'll just go with it. Uh, Nick Chubb and Austin Eckler at my RB core. Definitely love that pairing there. Two of the top 14 guys I keep alluding to. Then my receivers. I mean, Robert Woods, as consistent as they come. DJ Chark, we talked about multiple times how many times we think the Jaguars are going to throw this year. Hayden Hurst, top six guaranteed lock tight end in this this year. I mean, I, I can't get it any higher than I am on this guy. I He was my my guy at the tight end position. I do think that volume that he's going to get is tremendous on the Atlanta Falcons. But uh, looking at the flexes again, it has uh, Jonathan Taylor and Devontae Parker there. As Jonathan Taylor is kind of getting acclimated, I will probably throw in uh, a different option there. Like, let's say... Uh, Justin Jefferson, LaVisca Chanel, Michael Pittman, a guy who can kind of get me through the first couple of weeks that I know is going to be getting guaranteed volume right away. Uh, Devontae Parker as my second flex. And then coming off the bench, we do see J.K. Dobbins, Cam Newton, Boston Scott, Justin Jefferson, Michael Pittman, LaVisca Chanel, and Bryce Love and rounding out my team. So overall, again, this was our Yahoo fantasy kind of mock draft, 12 team, half PPR. If you guys have any other suggestions uh, you want to see, obviously we're going to be finishing out the series with NFL.com and uh espn mock drafts but is there any, if there's any other mock drafts you want to see you want to see us do a 10 team standard you want to see us do i don't know fucking two quarterback league anything drop it down below we will we will take your suggestions to heart make a video on them get you guys ready for your drafts because that's what we're here to do we're here to make sure you have all the information available to you guys to be able to make the most informed decision based off what you're here and based off what you believe so glad you guys made it this far in the video anything you want to add bush it's fucking week one, starting when you guys are listening Insane. to this. That's, let's, let's take that in. We are less than a week away from actual football being played. We don't have to listen to jackasses talk about their hot takes anymore, including us. It's actual toe-hitting leather, and we're all I'm, – I'm personally excited, and this kind of probably sounds stupid, but I'm excited to see what I got wrong and what I got right, mostly what I got wrong, to be honest. But okay. um, I, think, I think it's super fun, and, and I'm really sad that I'm not going to see if I was right about Rojo. Like, maybe I will be, but – um, the fact that Leonard Fournette had to take his fat Superman. ass and ruin everything it, is, it kind of pisses me off because I wanted to see Rojo smash this year because I really thought that was going to happen. So yeah. Anyway, um, as Danny mentioned, like the video hit the button that looks like this. If you receive some value from this, 
comment down below any uh, any comments that you have on the draft or anything suggestions wise um, coming into the season too. We're going to be getting into our in season content schedule starting next week. Uh, me and Nick are going to have our bold predictions for the season on Monday, and then we're straight into like waiver wires and preview and shit. And it's sick. fucking really exciting because I'm kind of low key kind of sick of talking about players' outlooks. Just want to see them play. So. Um, without further ado, guys, take it easy and enjoy your Friday. Yeah, start, sit, shout out Crocomon. But anyways, peace out, y'all. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got to end.